Suzuka has prospered over the years as a post village on the old Issei San Hokkaido Road and the Tokaido Road. Today it is also famous worldwide as a center for motorsports. In this town, where the historical coexists with the modern, traditional crafts have continued from ancient times to be steadfastly passed down. The village of Shiroko, an enclave of the Kihi clan, has long been known as a village of skilled craftsmen. One of the traditional arts of Suzuka is sumi ink. Kanji, or Chinese characters, were brought to Japan through the Korean Peninsula in the 6th century, resulting in the advent of written culture in Japan. the sumi ink was brought to Japan together with the kanji. It is recorded in the Chronicles of Japan that sumi was first made in 610 AD during the Asuka era, after the manufacturing process was taught by a Korean monk. Full-scale production of sumi in Suzuka began toward the end of the Edo era, being blessed with the conditions necessary to make sumi, good materials, pure water, and a climate marked by Suzuka Oroshi, the winds blowing down from the Suzuka mountains, helped the development of sumi manufacture. Today, Suzuka ranks with Nara as one of the two largest centers for the production of Japanese sumi. How is sumi made? The raw materials for sumi are ink black, glue, and fragrance. First, ink black is obtained from the burning of rapeseed oils or pine wood. The glue used, called nikawa, is a glutinous substance made from cattle or deer hides which acts to fix the sumi. <coughs> Water is added to the glue to make a starchy, syrup-like solution. Next, the ink black and glue solution are mixed and roughly kneaded. The kneaded bowl of sumi has the consistency of freshly pounded mochi rice cake. It is then vigorously worked with the feet. The ball of sumi is then carefully kneaded again by hand to ensure that there are no air pockets or bubbles. At this point, fragrances such as musk or borneo camphor are added to give sumi its distinctive smell. The kneaded sumi ball is then torn off into pieces sized to fit the mold. The pieces of sumi are then placed in wooden molds. The mold with the sumi is placed in a small press. At first glance, this work may appear simple, yet this technique can be done only with long years of experience and intuition. After the piece has obtained the proper shape, which takes about 30 minutes, it is removed from the mold. removed from the mold and the following day is plain into a uniform shape. Next, the sumi is placed between sheets of paper and put into a box filled with ash to remove moisture. The sumi is dried for 7 to 25 days. <coughs> the moisture must be removed gradually, as the sumi will crack or warp if it is dried too quickly. 
At this point, changing of the ash is performed. The ash is changed daily while its humidity is adjusted. After the sumi has dried to a certain point, it is very carefully inspected. Sticks of sumi which pass this inspection are then entwined in straw and hung from the ceiling in a closed room for natural drying. After drying for two to four months, most of the water will have been removed. This drying process is of critical importance in making sumi. Any grime is washed off the dried sumi with water. is then brought indoors and cured in the smoke from a sawdust fire.
This is to prevent the fibers of the paper from stretching or shrinking, and also to protect it from being eaten by insects. The paper turns a brown color after being smoked indoors for one week. After this, the process of being immersed in persimmon juice, dried in the sun, and smoked indoors is repeated. <coughs> it takes about one and a half months until the katejigami is completed. The best paper is said to be that which has aged for at least one year before being used. By this process, the strong, non-shrinking, non-stretching Katejigami paper, which can withstand the carving and dyeing procedures, is made. A variety of factors determine the quality of a kimono, but design is one of the most important. In dyed kimono as well, sense of design is critical. Today, there is a demand for things in which traditional subject matter is designed to suit the modern age. During the Edo era, the feudal lords would choose distinctive common patterns for their own clan, and there was competition for finer and more graceful patterns, which stimulated the development of these techniques. Later, use of common patterns also spread among the common people of the era. Paper stenciling flourished, and the villages of Shiroko and Jike in Suzuka began to produce them. They later received patronage as a special product of the Ki clan, and Issei Katagami spread throughout all of Japan. Yes. Next, let's look at the processes for cutting the paper stencils. The paper stencils must be carved to bring out the life in a pattern and to ensure that the kimono turns out as envisioned. First, the katejigami is checked to make sure there is no dirt or dust on it. Next is a procedure called orihiki. A light coating of rapeseed oil is allowed to soak into the katajigami. This is so the tip of the cutting tool will slide in smoothly when the pattern is being cut. Toji, or binding. Several sheets of katajigami are bound with string so they won't slip out of place. The design is then transferred to the katajigami and marking is done. Using these markings, called hoshime, the stencils are fed one after the other and dyeing can be carried out. These kind of preparations are made before the cutting process is begun. In Issei Katagami, there are four traditional methods of cutting that continue to this day. One of these is hikibori. In this technique, the craftsman pulls a small blade toward himself to make a cut. The tip of the blade cuts the complex pictorial design drawn on the katajigami seemingly at will as if it were alive. Hikibori is normally used when cutting curved lines. Repeated straight lines are cut by a technique called shimabori. A straight edge is used on the stencil to cut in lines with exact spacing. It looks simple, however it is a technique that requires extreme accuracy as the cutting of a single line requires three passes of the small blade in exactly the same place.
These are the tools and cutting blades used in Shimabori. Close scrutiny of and devoted research on materials and tools result in exceptional works. Some works of Shimabori require as many as 11 lines cut in the width of a single centimeter. It is truly a technique requiring the skill of a master craftsman. delicate common patterns. The tip of the cutting tool has a half cylinder shape and is held vertically to the stencil and rotated to cut a small cylindrical hole. If the size or spacing of the hole is not just right or the position is only slightly off, the pattern is ruined and cannot be used for dyeing. This painstaking work can only begun to be mastered after rigorous training, and the repetitiveness of the patterns can act to make the technique that much more difficult. Among Kiribori works, there can be as many as 100 holes in one square centimeter in the more detailed sections of the pattern. Dokubori is a technique in which the tip of the cutting tools themselves are in the shape of a flower, or folding fan or diamond shape. These tools are used to cut a variety of patterns. For this method, each craftsman makes his own tools and the execution of this workmanship is of critical importance to the final product. More than 20 different tools are used in the cutting of a single pattern and some craftsmen have as many as 3,000 of these cutting tools. Characteristics of dokubori are the uniformity of the pattern and the variegated shapes that can be expressed. pictorial designs such as yuzen and yukata. From five to eight sheets of kata jigami are placed on a special cutting board and a small blade with a tip of one to two millimeters is held vertically and pushed with a sawing motion making the cut away from the craftsman. Matching the cutting method to the pattern in this way gives birth to complex pictorial designs. In order to dye the pictorial design cleanly, reinforcement of the stencil is necessary so that it doesn't move while the dyeing is being carried out. <coughs> A technique called Ito Ire was used from long ago. But beginning in the Taisho era, a new technique called shabari came into use. Lacquer is spread on the pattern stencil, and a delicate silk gauze called sha is applied for reinforcement. This shabari process is as important as the cutting technique itself. Thank you. 
At one glance, it looks like simple work, but this also requires long years of experience. Through shabari, the delicate cutting technique can be fixed in beautiful dyed goods. spread throughout the country during the Edo era. The craftsmen were prohibited from taking apprentices from other regions and from dealing with other than local traders. Under these severe restrictions, the techniques were handed down through the generations. Today, most Japanese wear Western style clothes and the demand for these paper stencils has dropped. However, these crafts passed down over long years continue to spread in fields other than dyeing. One of these new fields is the decoration of household fixtures. Hikibori, kiribori, dogubori, and tsukibori. The blossoming of these four techniques of Ise Katagami can be seen as beautiful decorations on sliding doors and transoms and Yukimi Shoji, snow viewing paper doors. These traditional industries boasting over 1,000 years of history are now expanding out to a new world.